Hello, very good morning. It is three minutes past 11. You're listening to Ian Dale on Sunday. Uh, Normally you would hear Nigel Farage in this slot, but he's standing in the European elections. He's obviously the leader of the Brexit party. Um, But the good news is, if you're a Nigel Farage fan, he's here for the next hour, uh, taking questions from me, then taking questions from you. Um, Nigel, welcome. It's a bit odd for you to be sitting that side of the desk. Good morning. Uh, Good morning to you. Um, Well, no one can say whether they like you or hate you that you haven't made an impact with the Brexit party over the last three weeks um softball question to start with i know some people are going to expect softball questions right through but i'll give you a softball one to start with why do you think that you have made the impact that you have and the change uk group have not made that kind of impact Uh, you know branding is so important you know whether it's selling a product whether it's setting up a a political party uh, it really matters and i think having the word Brexit in the title of the party was absolutely the right thing to do. I think also if you look um, at the colour scheme we've chosen, the logo we've chosen, the way that we've launched, the way we've embraced modern social media, perhaps in a way that no UK political party has ever done in the past, that's one reason that we're doing reasonably well. Uh, Change UK. Change what? Stay in the European Union. So change nothing. I mean, if they'd gone for the word remain, ah, Now, they might be in business if they'd chosen the right name. They've got the wrong name. I thought the launch uh, was, frankly, just amateurish. I mean, it just looked like a student union gathering. Um, And they appear to be in chaos. And, and, I mean, irony of ironies. I mean, mean, you know, them selling themselves as being this wonderful rebirth of British politics. And and they've had to kick out two candidates for being racist. Which is normally your job. Well, actually, there were 800 (laughs) complaints of anti-Semitism with the Labour Party at the moment. I think there were 40 Tory complaints of Islamophobia. So, I mean, social media clearly is a problem for all political parties. But I do, I mean, I, I genuinely believe... If you're setting up a brand new political party, the branding, the launch is key. And I think we've done quite well with that. I should explain, you can watch us also on the LBC Facebook page, the YouTube channel, on the website and on the LBC Twitter feed. What's your aim with the Brexit party? Is it literally to just ensure that we leave the EU and then you will go away again? Or is this going to be a permanent no, fixture? No, it isn't. It's much more fundamental than that. I mean, look, I spent 25 years battling away trying to get this referendum and, and helping to win that referendum. And, you know, Ian, I have to tell you that when 498 MPs voted for Article 50, a parliamentary majority of 384, saying we would leave on the 29th of March with or without a deal, I did actually think that that was it, that we were going to be leaving, a meaningful Brexit was coming. And what we've seen, frankly, is on the one hand, sheer incompetence from the Prime Minister uh, and many around her, but through much of Parliament, a willful betrayal of that vote. So what would, I mean, what would be the point? What would be the point in the Brexit Party winning this election, in maybe, if we're forced into, into a second referendum, winning that referendum? If we have the same MPs in Parliament, we're going to get the same result. So the, the aim of the Brexit Party is very clear, and that is that the 23rd of May is the first step we want to change politics for good in this country, and that means to replace many of the existing MPs, to get a parliament that begins to represent the view of people in this country. And frankly, the two-party system uh, seems to serve nothing but itself these days. So no, we are about radical, genuine change. But it's all very well to rail against the establishment, to claim that democracy has been betrayed, that the elites are out of touch. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's that's going to resonate with a lot of people. Well, I think it's all it, true. It, well, it may be true, but you can whip people up into a sort of populist fervour. But where's the beef? You've diagnosed the problem, but where's yep. the solution? There's not a single policy on your website, for example. Oh, we are fighting a European election. You know, I'm, Still requires I mean, policies. Hang on, I am on the Brexit horse, and there's Beecher's Brook in front of me, which is the 23rd of May, and we are talking about the single most important political question you and I will ever debate in our lives, namely whether we have a democracy that is worthy of that name. Because frankly, the way that I feel is that our democracy has been traduced over the course of the last few months. So we are fighting this European election on democracy, on trust, and frankly on competence, because I believe the kind of candidates that we're putting forward with their life experiences but that, but could run this country better. Now that's an anti policy. You need to have a pro policy. No, no, we well. believe in, no no we believe in democracy, the others don't. It's, it's well, actually a very strong you, you, policy. Again, a good slogan, but it's completely fatuous, isn't it? Because are you are you telling me that I, all I Conservative am, MPs or Labour sorry. MPs aren't Democrats? Uh, no, they're not. They're absolutely not. They have willfully overridden the will of the people, despite You know, the government document that that came through our door telling us the result of the referendum would be implemented, despite 
telling us at a general election, both of those parties, they would respect the result and implement Brexit. Uh, they, they've walked all over us. And they think we're just going to roll over and let this happen. Fine, but we're you, not. But you surely have to tell people, um, if you get more seats than anybody else at the yep. European elections, and then you move forward to the next general election, they need to know what kind of Brexit you are envisaging. You, oh, you can't just say, well, we're going oh, to what leave. what kind of Brexit? Well, of course, we'll leave on WTO terms as quickly as possible. Why isn't that on your website? Uh, well, listen, we haven't had the manifesto launch yet, but we will. Over the course so of the you are actually weeks. having a manifesto. Yeah, a very short manifesto for these European elections. And if you want to ask me about domestic policy and about the way in which we want to change, for example, the House of Lords and things like that, all of that will come in good time. What would be a dreadful error is to confuse a European election on this vital question by talking about other things. Let's talk about democracy. Let's talk about actually the people expressing that opinion. Well, let's come on to some of the details about what would happen after Brexit in a moment. But you, you rail against the elites. You went to yeah. Dulwich College. What's you, that got to do You're with? against career politicians, but you spent longer in the European Parliament than most MPs have been in Westminster. Trying to get most rid of people my see job? You as, Trying? No, most they don't. people see you as part of the oh, no, elite. Well, your opponents certainly no, no. do. A few of the left-wing commentary at might, but hey, come on, this is nuts. I... I was in business. I'd never even stood for local council. I had no ambitions to be in politics at all. But I realised not only was our engagement with the EC, as it was then, the European community, when I first started thinking about this, not only was that taking us in the wrong direction, but I also realised there was nobody in Westminster with the guts to actually stand up and fight for this. That's why I got involved in it. And far from being a career politician, I've tried for 20 years to be the turkey that votes for Christmas to get rid of my own job. I was perfectly happy after Article 50 passed in the House of Commons, never to engage in frontline politics again. And that could not be clearer. I am back, Ian, because we have been let down and we've been betrayed. Just when we thought it was safe, you're back. Well, I know. Thank you. Um, let's look at the effect of Brexit on the United Kingdom and the Union, um, because a lot of people think that the Leave vote has endangered the Union. Are you a Unionist? Yes, absolutely. And I think the indecision is the one thing that probably is uh, causing problems with the union. You know, once something is done, one time it becomes the status quo, uh, people very quickly adjust and begin to accept the new reality. The fact this has now dragged on for three years and we're no nearer a conclusion, uh, it's not surprising. And do, do you, I don't know if you've read the Sunday Times this morning, but they've got a big feature on this new IRA and what, what happened yeah. in, in Derry. And they effectively, I'm talking about the new IRA here, they say that Brexit has given them them uh, given them a bit of a boost. Now, that if, that if that is true, that is incredibly worrying. Obviously, all about the uncertainty about the Irish We're not going to bow to terrorism. We've no. never bowed, we have never bowed to terrorism in the past. And we are not going to have the greatest democratic exercise in the history of our nation undermined by a tiny, mercifully tiny group of people threatening terrorism. They're using it as an excuse. So your manifesto the, the reality is will tell us how the reality to deal with is, the Irish border. Of course. The reality is, the reality of course is, uh, that we've seen rumblings of extreme republicanism over the course of the last couple of years. Um, how will you deal with the Irish border? Because if you if you want to leave on WTO terms, um, th that there is a real issue there, isn't well, there? Well, unfortunately there is, because uh, Mrs May never asked for a free trade deal. Had we asked for a free trade deal at the very start of this, we would have got one. Of that, I have absolutely no doubt at all. Um, there are two issues, aren't there, with goods going back and forth across the border. One is quality and standards, well, given that we're completely harmonised with European Union rules, for the first year or two, that will not even be an issue of any kind at all. And the second, of course, is tariff. It is absolutely my view uh, that if you leave on WTO terms, your ability to do a tariff-free deal with the European Union in short order actually becomes very, very realistic, but, because but, that's but what if, they if want. There are, and, if, and if there in are... Short term, and in a short term, and in a short term, let's just be clear, that I think there's a big misunderstanding as to how trade actually happens. Unlike almost everybody in politics, you know, I've spent time importing and exporting materials while I had a proper job in the world of commodities. You know, when these big containers come in from China 
on WTO terms. There isn't some little fella in Southampton inspecting every container. No, but some this, are inspected. Uh, some are, yeah. yes. And just as with products from the European and Union. And so therefore, hang on, there, hang on, to be an there are lorries border, from the European there? Union that, 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 that get checked at Dover too, for other reasons, uh, stowaways, illegal migrants, you name it. The fact is, all of this stuff is logged online. And what is really interesting is that the Irish government themselves have said, with, with the WTO Brexit, there will be no physical border. Michel Barnier has said, with the WTO Brexit, there will be no border. The only risk of a border appears to be in Mrs May's treaty, where we're talking but unless uh, perhaps about using a But alignment stop. of regulations and standards... There, and there is. Nev- well, there is at the moment, yes. obviously. But if down the line the UK government decides on certain things to go away from EU standards, um, then there would still would have to be a border and there would have to be checks. There is not going to be massive regulatory change in Brexit Britain within well, the first... Well, what's the point within, of it? What within, is the point of Brexit? Six what months, is the point of Brexit the first six if there months, isn't going to be change? Within the first six months or nine months, I would have a bet with you that we will have a tariff-free arrangement with the European Union way before... There is real divergence. And you think, but surely your aim has to be real divergence. Otherwise, as I say, what was the point of it? Where would you like to see divergence? One of the points of Brexit is for us to become more competitive. Uh, And certainly, when we look at industries like financial services, where I get too technical about it, but for example, this MIFID II directive has put massive costs on the City of London for no benefit to investors with no further protection whatsoever. There are areas like this where we can become leaner, fitter, stronger and, crucially, start to look more out to the world. Have you been to the Irish border? Yeah, not recently, but yeah, of course I have, yes. Because... I mean, people who are on the border obviously are affected, are, will, would be affected by what, whatever happens. And do, do you understand the strength of feeling for people who, who live in Northern Ireland or even in the, in the Republic of Ireland about what the long-term effects of this might be in, if, if in, people in, don't in, get in, it right? In, in, uh, the European Union are not going to build a physical border. The Irish government are not going to build a physical border. The British government are not going to build a physical border. This has been used, it's been put up as a negotiating tactic, and sadly, the Prime Minister fell for it. Do you know, in the European Parliament, in 2017, there was actually a parliamentary report issued saying how to deal with the Irish border in case of a tariff okay. regime. And, 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 and everybody has agreed that if there are tariff differentials, you frankly can log all of that on a mobile phone. You seem to have changed your mind on um, the Norway option, for example. I've never changed my mind on the Norway well, you, option. You did say in 2014, wouldn't it be terrible if we were like Norway and Switzerland? Really, they're rich, they're happy, they're self <laughs> It was a sarcastic answer to David Cameron, but we can do better than Norway. Um, and I have to say, all this talk of Norway that Nick Bowles and others are putting forward, no one's talked about fishing. I mean, we'd be Norway without the fish. What they're actually proposing is even well, worse if, for if, us. If, Norway if, is five million people. If you were so exercised Nor- about fishing, why have you only attended one out of 40 to because we want committee to, meetings we want to leave in, the, the European, in the European Parliament. Because we want to leave the European Union. No, but if you attend the meetings, you can shape the policy, no, can't you? But you no, been no, 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 no. It was purely, there was no legal role, there was no legislative role in that committee whatsoever. You couldn't do a thing. It was pointless. And it gets to the real argument. We've spent 45 years, Ian, inside the European project, arguing we can reform it from within. We haven't. We are leaving. Name a single tangible thing that will be improved for the average working Briton after we've left the EU. Uh, their confidence and belief that they're living in a free, democratic country. And do you know something? You can't put a price on That's freedom. That's not tangible, though, is you it? Cannot, you cannot put a price on freedom. And, that, and actually, what is Brexit about? Brexit actually is about us being a free, independent nation. That's what the referendum was about. But a tangible now, ta- thing. Well, tangible. That's something that you feel. It's not tangible. Well, look at wages. Isn't it interesting that since, since Brexit... We had a decrease, not a massive decrease, but a decrease in numbers coming into the UK, into the work market from the European Union. And just as Sir Stuart Rose, if, if, if you remember, was the head of the Remain campaign, when he was asked, well, if there were limits on open borders, would that mean people's wages would go up? He said, yes, but I don't think that's a good thing. And they put him into hiding for the rest of the campaign. And I do think, I do think there is a chance for wages to go up. But look, Brexit on its own doesn't solve all of our problems. What Brexit does, it gives us a chance to make this a much better country. And, 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 and I do think, and I really believe this, we have become, through manufacturing, 
through the National Health Service, through many, many parts of industry. It's kind of suited us not to train our own people and to rely on cheaper imports coming in from Europe and indeed from the rest of the world. You, you, and I think a fundamental change of mindset's needed here. Let's start believing in our country. Let's start investing in our people. And I think Brexit is the chance to do that. Do you not think, though, that the longer this all goes on, the more uncertainty there's going to be, and although you've railed against the the project fear right from the start, mm. that we are approaching a time now where if this goes on much longer, there is going to be damage to the economy. We know that investment decisions are being held mm. back. Yes. Um, and therefore, the other side will be able to claim that the economy is tanking due to Brexit. Well, and to an extent, they'll be right. Although, having said that, I mean Warren Buffett, the world's most successful investor, said yesterday, he's ready to invest in Brexit Britain and that's a very good sign he generally gets things right I look the we, we are doing okay I'm not saying our economy is perfect but we're doing okay we're doing far better uh, than the eurozone the one issue as you as you quite rightly say is some investment decisions have been stalled because people just want this over and done with Nigel Farage, you will be with us for the next 40 minutes taking calls from our listeners after half past it's 19 minutes past 11 LBC. Have you ever bought an investment sold by Barclays, Halifax, Lloyds, Santander or any other bank or financial advisor? Investments like stocks and shares ISAs, investment bonds and certain types of pension can be risky. If you lost money with one of these investments, you could be owed thousands of pounds in compensation. Even if you no longer have the investment or the paperwork, here at Goodwin Barrett, we can still help. To start your free assessment with Goodwin Barrett, text GOOD to 60777. That's GOOD to 60777. Our house is too tall. Our house is a funny shape. The walls are too thick. If you're constantly making excuses for your weak Wi-Fi signal, get the new BT Complete Wi-Fi Guarantee. Clever Wi-Fi discs extend your smart hub signal to every room, whatever size and shape your house is. It's $39.99 a month on an 18-month contract with a $29.99 setup fee. BT customers can upgrade with BT+. Plus. BT. Be there. New customers, CPI increase starting 2020, 44 49 a month from month 19, up to three discs to guarantee Wi-Fi or £20 off your bill. Alexa, who is the best English rugby player of all time? Good question. My favourite is Johnny Wilkinson. Really? Ah, oh, nice one. Alexa, who is the most popular English rugby player of all time? Definitely Johnny Wilkinson. Alexa, I love you. That's really sweet. Take out Vitality Life Insurance today and we'll give you an Amazon Echo Dot, plus an Amazon Smart Plug. And to find your inner athlete, enable the Alexa Vitality skill for fitness and nutrition tips. To get your Amazon bundle today, just search Vitality Life. Vitality. Positively different. New member offer available on certain Vitality plans until 30th of June 2019. Minimum monthly premiums, terms and conditions apply. There's nothing like meeting face-to-face. -face, and there's nothing like Zoom to make that happen. Zoom lets you connect and do business across town or around the world. Zoom ties together all of your communication needs into one easy platform for video conferencing, phone calls, group chat, webinars, and your conference rooms. Connect easily from anywhere, your mobile phone, your laptop, or conference room. Zoom is how business gets done. Get your free account at zoom.com today. Meet happy with Zoom. The seven dwarves were in a bit of a pickle. With the mines closing down, their finances were somewhat fickle. They looked to downsize their home fast, so Snow White could make her debts a thing of the past. Boys, the cottage is looking well rough. So they spoke to the friendly team at Property Rescue, who buy properties in any condition and can offer a guaranteed sale in as little as two days, hassle-free. Fast forward to living happily ever after. Visit propertyrescue.co.uk. Property Rescue. Fast forward to sold. Unlock the city with the new Range Rover Evoque. Know your... From your... Know your side streets. From your inner city beats. Know your underbelly. And where to fill your belly. Know your north. From your south. Live for the city with the new Range Rover Evoque. Land Rover. Above and beyond. Leading Britain's conversation. Ian Dale. Tweet at LBC. 22 minutes past 11. Nigel Farage is here. He's about to take your calls. 0345 6060 973. Um, 
If you had your time over again, would you have approved that breaking point poster from the 2016 referendum? Oh, yes. I mean, that was the issue that changed not just British politics, but the whole of European politics. A massive error was made by Mrs Merkel, and she expected everybody else to pick up the pieces. Maybe so, but that poster itself, I would still submit, and I said it at the well, time... it was a photograph. I, it wasn't a poster. Well, it was a poster. It was a billboard. The, the the inference was that somehow this was a you know a, a design a cartoon it was a photograph of what was actually going on because of the madness by the way not just Mrs Merkel I mean Juncker got this wrong too and that's why it said the EU has failed us all and I remember shortly after the referendum I was on a, on a BBC show they used to invite me on in those days uh, with David Blunkett you're not complaining that you don't get invited on the oh, media not, not at all now uh, these, I, mean, I mean literally not at all <laughs> seriously I mean, oh, absolutely seriously um, but that's a separate point point. Um, and David Blunkett I met and David Blunkett said he said goodness me he said that post won you the referendum because it kept the argument focused on open borders on the fact that you know our passport wasn't just for British people it was an EU passport and some people don't like the truth and I accept that and I know that you don't see that it was remotely racist. How can a photograph be racist? Well, the slogan. The EU the has slogan, failed us all. I think it's said a lot. The whole poster I implied a dislike of immigrants, a dislike of refugees. It had sort of... Well, sub, had they been refugees, had they been refugees overtone. that might have been very interesting. Where were the children? Where were the disabled? Where were the women? They were all males aged 18 to 30 uh, and, and coming from all over the world, using the opportunity of the EU and Mrs Merkel's stupidity to flood into the European Union. This, I think, Union. will tell people an awful lot, because a, a lot of people think that the new Brexit party is not UKIP reincarnated. It is a much more liberal version of UKIP, and it's not going to have the anti-immigration, anti-Islam overtones of UKIP. Well, I never had any of that when I was leading it. I'm, I'm very sorry, but if you, you know, when I was leader of UKIP, you know, I may well have talked about radical Islam and some of the dangers that it posed to our society. I talked absolutely about some of the failures of integration that we'd seen since 2000, particularly given how well we'd managed immigration since 1945. Yes, I talked about those things, but not obsessively. And let me say this to you, as leader of UKIP, we were never anti-immigration. We were always for controlled, sensible immigration and to stop discriminating against people from India and against people from Australia in favour of those coming from Europe to do things on a much fairer basis. But only 22% of immigration to the UK comes from EU countries. So why, why is freedom of movement such a, a no-no for you when it's actually, if you want to reduce immigration, it's from outside the EU that the problem well, seems if you to look, be? Well, if you look between 2004 and 2010, of course, actually over 50% of people were coming in from the European Union. And it waxes and wanes, and I understand that. Of course it does. Uh, the fact that numbers coming from the rest of the world have been so high is because the Conservative government fails again and again and but, again. But we have full employment in this country. We clearly need immigrant labour. So wh why is it such a totemic well, we issue? We don't have full employment, well, we do. but we've got very low rates of no, unemployment, we do, but and that's a good thing. The Bank of, Impl the Bank of England in this studio, um, one of the people from the Monetary Policy Committee, Ian McCafferty, said we now have full employment. It's 3.9%, which in modern terms is full employment. We're heading towards it. Ian, we have got to stop relying. We've got to stop relying on cheap imported labour. We've got to start investing in our own people. And if we need people from overseas, and, and in a growing economy, you very often do, then you do it on the basis of a work permit. You don't do it on the basis of full entitlements to everything else. And by that I'm talking about whether it's health or education or whatever it is. And that's the right approach. And that's how nearly every country in the world... Okay. You know, if you and I went to work in America, that's how it would work. Who's funding the Brexit party? Well, that's the fascinating thing and the most exciting thing is we've done this all via the website and we have now had, and I haven't got the latest figures, but it's, it's, I, we're, we're now over 70,000. So we have over 70,000 people who are now registered supporters of the Brexit party and they've all paid their £25 online. If you work it out, that's a very, very good start. So it's just those donations? Have, at, you, have, you, have stage, you received other donations? <clears throat> at this stage, we've received one big donation from whom? One, well, that would be revealed in good what, time. Why can't you reveal it now? Because it's not fair. What, what, um, why not? Because it's not you fair. You have to be it transparent will, about donations. Yeah, so well, and why we will you, be, why and we will be in good time. Coy? And we will be in good time. Why are you being coy? We've raised £1.8 million on the website so far, all right? We've had one donation that, take, that, that we're still below £2 million, all right? But now that we've raised the seed capital to get the party off the ground, now is our opportunity to go to some of the bigger donors and ask for help. I... 
I don't believe in approaching people with big money and saying, help us, we're skint. People with pe- people who've been successful, entrepreneurs, will respect an organisation that's helped itself. We know that you have to um, say who your donors are. Somebody who's donated, say, £200,000 or whatever it is, yeah. they know that their name is going to be revealed. So and why and, can't you reveal it now? And in good, well, I haven't asked that person for permission to do so. But let's, let's, let's get the real story here. Who else in British politics has ever raised that amount of money in that space of time online? And that's and, all and, been done through PayPal donations. It has. So... How can you track who these people are through PayPal donations? Uh, How do you know that they're not foreign? <laughs> we've done all of that. We had the Sun. We had, we had the Sun on Sunday newspaper sitting in the office, and it was in last Sunday's paper, watching as the twenty-five pounds clicked in, and they were coming in one every twenty seconds, something like that. And you could see the postcode where people live. And, but and, but you, it, it is possible to donate to do, donate if you're overseas, isn't it? Uh, they, these were coming in from. Cheltenham no, I know. and Twickenham and, of course, and the, the Scottish the majority borders. will, but you are not allowed to accept any donations, as I understand it, from overseas. And with PayPal, surely it's impossible to track whether they We're are on from top overseas. Of this. We're on top of this. We've got, you know, we've got everyone's postcode. In many cases, we've got their phone numbers as well. We've got credit card details. We know who our donors are. The, the maximum you can donate uh, without saying who you are, <laughs> without revealing your identity, I think is uh, £499. Pounds. Mm-hmm. And I'm told you've had quite a lot of those. What, why, why is it that a lot of people don't want to reveal I think you're missing are. I think you're missing the story are you completely missing very possible no I think you're completely missing an incredibly exciting story and that is that in the space of three weeks a brand new political party no, I get that. has got 70,000 paid up subscribers and I think that's amazing because it's we never know, happened in this and, country and before we, and exactly and we know who they are and in the old phrase we know where they live <laughs> How chilling. Um, but you also know that the going back to the referendum campaign, um, uh, Leave.eu got into all sorts of trouble with the Electoral Commission on yeah, financial mostly through issues. lies. Yeah, mostly well, through okay, lies. You can, yeah, you Russian can say money. That, but you, Russian but you money. Know, Russian you know collusion. that that has been a problem. Russian so you've got to be Russian squeakier money. than you know, squeakier. I, I've you? never, I mean, I honestly think, and it's happened not just here, but, but in, in America too, the way. The way that the other side, the Remain side, or the Democrats in America, the way they were able, through certain media organs, some in this country, to just chuck out endless allegations of people receiving Russian money, and it's all proved to be is, baseless. Is that, is that large donation from Aaron Banks? No. It isn't. Right. OK. Have you, how, how much of a role is he playing in this He's not, new party? He's not. No he, role at all. He runs the Leave.eu website, which if you look in, has more engagement every week than any political website in this country, I think think actually in the whole of Europe. So he's busy doing that. He's been through a long court case with the Electoral Commission, where the judge in his summing up has said that Leave.eu did nothing dishonest. He's got one or two more things to get rid of and all of it based on false allegations but he's not involved in this but the, there's a video doing the rounds of you in a meeting with steve bannon i don't know when this was from um but he actually says that he would fund a new party that you're setting up um wh- when was the last time you talked to steve bannon i haven't seen steve bannon for a few months so no input from steve bannon into this financially or no, in any no. other way this is mrs mr and mrs smith from acacia avenue these are the people that are signing I think up it's Miggins, and well whichever it may be <laughs> and ian you know it, it it is remarkable what we're doing and 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 i i wonder i mean you never know with a campaign like this but if we keep going on our current trajectory you know, we're going to have a big membership. And final question from me. Um, if there is a by-election in Peterborough, will you be the candidate for the Brexit party? The Brexit party will, will stand in the Peterborough by-election, absolutely. Would you consider being the candidate? No, I can't. i tell you why. Because we're about to send, perhaps, a large cohort of brand new MEPs out to Brussels. They're going to need somebody with a bit of experience to help show them the ropes. And it would also mean that I have to do this program for another four weeks, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, there is that with you too. <laughs> but you're right. loving it. We are, I am actually. Uh, we are going to take your calls to Nigel in a moment. Uh, there are no lines free at the moment, but you can keep trying. <laughs> 0345 6060 It's 11.32. Philip Chrysikos has the news headlines. 42,000 runners from across the world are taking part in the London Marathon this morning. So Mo Farah is hoping 
racing for his first win at the event. The men's wheelchair race has been won by Dan Romanchuk of America. Witnesses say a woman died shielding a rabbi from gunfire during a shooting at a synagogue in America. A 19-year-old man has been arrested in California. Three people were injured. The UK is being urged by China's ambassador in London not to listen to other countries over the development of new 5G mobile networks. A leak says Chinese telecom company Huawei was given the go-ahead by Theresa May during a confidential National Security Council Council meeting last week. LBC weather, sunshine and showers, those showers heaviest in the southwest of England through the afternoon, a high of 16 degrees. This is LBC. Have you ever bought an investment sold by Barclays, Halifax, Lloyds, Santander or any other bank or financial advisor? Investments like stocks and shares ISAs, investment bonds and certain types of pension can be risky. If you lost money with one of these investments, you could be owed thousands of pounds in compensation. Even if you no longer have the investment or the paperwork, here at Goodwin Barrett, we can still help. To start your free assessment with Goodwin Barrett, text GOOD to 60777. That's GOOD to 60777. Psst! Did you know that Pimlico Plumbers have an utterly fabulous 24-hour service? For plumbing, heating, drains, roofing, electrics, appliances, carpentry and building? Whatever your predicament, Pimlico Plumbers can send a friendly face to your door within the hour. Shh! And just between us. Their work even comes with a 12-month guarantee. They aren't just any old tradesmen, they're Pimlico Plumbers. And they're always available on 0207 928 or at pimlicoplumbers.com. Five stars would definitely recommend. It's a quality car seat, strong, sturdy and 100% safe. Perfect for our little lad. Not that I'd know. Never even owned a car seat. Don't have a car, don't have kids, don't have a conscience. I don't care if you end up with an unsafe product. Not when I'm getting paid to write fake reviews. A fake review could cost you more than you think. A witch membership helps you avoid these lies. Search witch for impartial product reviews. Witch, keep questioning. It took two brothers. And me, a designer. A software engineer. A manufacturing leader. A digital content creator. A product packer. And me, Ben, the relationship manager from Lloyds Bank, to bring the tech industry and sustainable fashion together. Because by working together with the business, he helped provide the finance needed for T-Mill to make sustainable clothing more accessible. Lloyds Bank, by the side of business. In the month-end sale at Oak Furniture Land, you'll get our solid hardwood furniture at really great prices. But it ends Sunday at a store near you. I'm from a small town in Lancashire, and growing up, I just always wanted to move away. But then my geography teacher took us rambling. So I'm there, walking through nature, and he begins explaining our home to us. Why it's so special. He showed me the trails my grandfather took, and also his grandfather before him. That teacher taught geography, but really, he was teaching me who I was. Teaching. Every lesson shapes a life. Use a subject you love to inspire a generation. Search Get Into Teaching. This is LBC with Ian Dale. Call 0345 6060 973. 11.36 11.36 here on LBC, you're listening to Ian Dale. Nigel Farage with me until 12 to take your calls. Let's go straight to the calls. We're going to keep all this quite short and sharp so we can get as many of you on as possible. Let's start with David in Reading. Hi, David. Yeah, hi, Ian. Uh, Nigel. Morning. Um, right. <clears throat> Morning. Um, you have made the statement after Brexit we can import cheaper food from all over the world, mm-hmm. followed by admitting it could be, quote, be bad for farmers, quote, it could be the lowering of standards of what food we buy in the shops, um, you forgot to mention the fishing industry, which will also have to compete with the rest of the world. Um, <laughs> my question, hang on, my question is, laugh. is this the UK you plan for the future and who exactly does it benefit? The quotes are actually online and you said them. Yeah. Oh, well, David, I think cheaper food benefits the average family and they need thinking about on all of these things. We've had, we've had much too, we've had much too, we've had much too expensive food for far too long as a result of the common agricultural policy. As and, a, role, as, as and a result I, of I, higher standards. I, no, no. Like, as you, a, you don't think we have the higher standards a, in Europe? We do. As a result, as a result. Compared to, compared to America, higher standards? 
Uh, well, um, uh, please, in the most litigious country in the world, do not think American standards of food aren't high. They're very, you're very saying, high you're indeed. Saying standards David, are you asked me a question. I will answer it by telling you, cheaper food, uh, and that may pose problems for some of our farmers, and I accept that. As far as fishing is concerned, it absolute travesty what has happened to our fishing fleet. Look at Norway, look at the Faroes, look at Iceland. Let's take back our territorial waters and get rid of this appalling but system. But do you accept that there will be British dump. farmers that go out of business as a result of Brexit? They'll have to adapt. That's what happens. All through life, things change, people adapt. If we decide to import cheaper food, that will provide some challenges in, of course. Um, Martin in Coventry says, can I join the Brexit party by post? Because there are people that can't use PayPal. I know, Martin, and this is a real issue, um, and there is, an ad- there is an address up on the site, and some people do send checks in. But if in. he can't get to the website, but, how can he find out the Well, address? virtually everyone I know knows somebody, knows okay. somebody who has got a daughter or a neighbour or somebody that can use All the right. web. And, and what I'm doing, in a sense, with this, Ian, I, I knew Beppe Grillo very well, the, the Italian stand-up comedian who set up the Five Star Party, which came first in the Italian general election. And my idea was to have a low-cost, bureaucracy-free online platform, and it seems to be working. Uh, Chad is in Barnet. What would you like to ask, Chad? Hi, Nigel. Hi, Ian. Uh, Hi. I'm like, I was a Leave voter in 2016, and I supported you, Nigel, because I thought that we could be, as you have said consistently during the referendum campaign, be like Norway, rich countries that, you know, have uh, maybe some input with trade and things. Now I'm supporting a people's vote because you have consistently oh, right. lied. Oh, you right. have consistently about, about, lied. Oh, oh, Chad, uh, you, the 350 million... Wait, Nigel, let me tell I never mentioned it, Chad. Million. I never mentioned it, Chad. That, what that, do you mean? I have it. No, 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 it Chad, here. Chad, 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 I'm, I'm sorry, I'm let, let sorry, Let me explain Chad. this one. That oh, one, the dear, 350 dear. million was from Vote Leave. Nigel was not part of Vote Leave, so no. you're actually yeah, wrong there. Okay, fine, leave the 350 million. I mean, I have it here, Nigel. Oh, do yeah. you? Well, Alistair Campbell giving you a briefing. No, let her answer the question. Bureaucracy free. Oh, now you see you've turned your radio on for some reason there, Chad. Um, if you can switch that off, we'll come back to you. No, you see, we can't. Uh, let's get another call, oh, if dear. we can, from it's Dominic sad. in Banbury. Hello, Dominic. Oh, hello. Hello. Morning. Good um, morning. Yes, I've got a question. Um, I was just wondering if Nigel can tell me uh, why I should, what I or anyone should have any confidence that the referendum vote will ever be implemented, considering that Parliament is, you know, is top-heavy with mm. these anti-democracy mm. MPs. The electoral system is rigged against small parties. And my my sense, my feeling is, uh, well, why why should I ever vote again? Well, if I completely and a half understand votes that. Be overturned, then I, what's the point of voting? I completely especially, especially understand. In that. EU hang on, Dominic. Hang on, Dominic. Let sorry, him answer. Yeah, sorry, I completely yeah. understand that sentiment, and I tell you something: it's one that is shared by many, many millions of people out there. Uh, my view, and I'm sure you'd agree, is that with this current uh, government and parliament, we will never, ever, ever get a meaningful Brexit of any kind at all. And as you quite rightly say, if a second referendum was forced upon us and we voted to leave again by a bigger margin, this lot still wouldn't give us a meaningful Brexit. I am hoping that we can do something pretty spectacular on the 23rd of May. Uh, and that how, we can how do you do- quantify that? Well, winning for you know a new party coming in and winning would be pretty spectacular, and that's what I'm aiming but to do. Percentage of vote, number of MEPs. I'm not going to make any predictions. All I'm saying is I'm travelling optimistically, and I believe we can do this. I really do believe we can do this. And then what we've got to do is we've either got to make our MPs say, "I'm sorry." We are going to honour this vote. We are going to make sure that you get a clean Brexit. Or, and I know it's not easy, or we will have to replace them. And that is the ambition uh, that we've set for the Brexit party. It's a high ambition, but we're going to give it our best shot. Thank you very much, Dominic. Christopher's in Wimbledon. What's your question, Christopher? Good morning, Ian morning. and uh, Nigel. Um, Nigel, you have one of the worst attendance records in the European Parliament. I mean, Ian did uh, cover a little bit with you. I would like to know, what did you do instead of going to meetings and debates whilst enjoying <laughs> quite a generous salary and perks paid for with my taxes? And if you I saved your taxes, bit, Christopher. Are you going to increase your attendance? I saved you loads of taxes. Many British MEPs turn up five days a week and sign in every morning to get the €300 Euro daily allowance. I did that uh, less than most British uh, MEPs. That's not exactly a very My good justification, overall, is it? Well, just, ju- just to turn up. 
just to turn up and sign in as ludicrous. But you, you, My you attendance. Were, you were seven hundred and forty-eight out of seven hundred and fifty-one in terms of t- in terms of turning up to vote. That's not. Tr- I, I, in, no, that's not actually true. Well, what um, were you then? If it isn't true, you must know what the my, truth is. My my voting attendance was as leader of UKIP was massively higher than Nick Clegg's was in Westminster as leader of the Liberal Democrats. And what I did uh, in it's answer to you, Christopher, bit of what a uh, well, what I did, Christopher, was I took um, a tiny, tiny political party and as national leader over the course of the next few years, got it to win the European elections. I can promise you, just because MEPs turn up turn up to sign on for their daily allowance does not mean you're getting value for But in for terms money. of voting, um, whether it's 748 or 721, I mean, it's a pretty appalling record. I've never is, won is, a single... Is, is that what the example that you're going to set I've to your new won, MEPs? I've never won... If you actually look at UKIP MEPs, their voting attendance records was very high. Mine wasn't, because I was a national party leader. And the same applies in Westminster. You could look at Ed Miliband's time, or David Cameron's time, or even today, Theresa May's time. When you're a national party leader, it's different. OK, are you convinced, Christopher? Um, not really, to be honest, Nigel. I mean, you, you need to represent the people. That's the purpose of a oh, representative. I, oh, I've done that, Christopher. My job, my job, as an MEP was to build a political movement to get us out of the European Union. I said that in my first day in 1999, and I've kept true to that. Right, let's move on to Steve, who's in Prescott in Liverpool. Hi, Steve. Good morning to you both, and thanks morning, for taking morning. the call. Uh, my question is, uh, as expected, um, the Brexit Party will probably storm the European elections, and will Nigel be expecting defections from very disillusioned Labour Party MPs and disillusioned Tory MPs after that? Steve, my absolute priority uh, has not been to go for defections. It's been, to, at this stage, to try and field a list of 70 candidates with some people with, with, with a massive cross-section of backgrounds in this country, and some of them hugely successful. And, of course, uh, you know, Anne Widdecombe uh, came along, which I think would class as a pretty major defector. Steve, if there are members of Parliament there that want to come and join the Brexit Party, we'd be very keen to have speak you, to have them. Have you talked to any? I, I, it's not my priority. It just no, is not wasn't my the answer to the question. Have you talked to any Conservative or Labour MPs about coming across? <sighs> no, I haven't. I haven't had time. I've been too busy getting this thing I ready. thought I was going to get a list from you, like Heidi Allen no, gave me a list of people that yeah, she was talking no, no, no. to. Look, uh, do you know something? Steve, if MPs want to come, that's great. But my priority is not that. And I think it's a very, very sort of inside Westminster Just debate. before we go to break, though, you have got um, a quite eclectic mix of candidates. We have. Um, you've got Anne Widdicombe, who is about as socially conservative mm. as you can get on issues like abortion, gay rights, etc. Yeah. Uh, climate change. You then have Claire Fox, mm-hmm. um, who, should we say, is the opposite. She's yep. attracted a few yep. headlines. Yep. How can those two women sit comfortably in the same party? This is not about left or right it's about right or wrong this is about democracy this is about whether we are to be a proper democratic nation respected in the eyes of the rest of the world and if we carry on down our current path we won't be and we've come together we've come together in this alliance to fight these european elections because this is the most important fine, but if, it, question. if it's a single it's issue most, referendum or election this is the fine. single issue without democracy what's the point of no, any no, of it but if if you do achieve your aim in the long term of getting yeah. mps elected how can you possibly have people like Anne Widdicombe and uh, claire fox and uh, i mean whether they would stand as mps i don't know but they, they are diametrically opposed to each other on virtually every single issue I could think of. Well, they're not diametrically opposed on uh, whether we should be a democratic one. country. Uh, they're not diametrically opposed on investing in our young people. They're not diametrically opposed in agreeing uh, that, you know, uh, spending huge amounts of money on things like HS2 is a waste of money when there are regions out there crying out for investment. I love I love this tweet from David Boink. I love his name as well. <laughs> I'm listening and Dale's asking all the right questions, but how far can he push a colleague? Seriously, it's just not going to happen. Well, I leave people to judge for themselves. <laughs> um, anyway, 10, 15 more minutes to get your questions to Nigel Farage if you think that I'm not doing an adequate job. It's uh, 0345 6060 973. It's 11.46. Coming up at 12 on LBC, David Lammy. With an attack on a synagogue in California and hundreds dead in Sri Lanka, what is the driving force behind this growing hatred? David Lammy on LBC. Attention all minicab drivers in London. You could be paying too much for your insurance. If you're licensed by the PCO and working in and around the London area, you must visit cubitminicabinsurance.co.uk. 
With us, you could enjoy our special schemes and preferential rates for London private hire drivers. Visit qubitminicabinsurance.co.uk and see how much you could save. qubitminicabinsurance.co.uk What would you do if you knew there was a place to learn step-by-step -step strategies designed to help you make the right moves inside the financial markets? A place to develop skills that could help you generate income and build confidence towards your retirement goals. At Online Trading Academy, we know there's an investor in all of us. And we know how to teach people just like you the skills and knowledge that could could empower you to take control of your financial future. Start by taking our free introductory class where you can learn about the two biggest mistakes investors make, as well as strategies that could help you make your money work harder for you. For over 20 years, Online Trading Academy has been teaching student skills designed to help them invest with the confidence of the pros. To register, visit otauk.com or call 01727 873 847. That's 01727 873 847. Seven. Trading involves risk and you can lose money. Online Trading Academy makes no promises or guarantees of investment performance. The value of investments is variable and can go down as well as up. Are you aged 40 to 70 and in good health? Then you could be paid to take part in a new research study at King's College London, looking at the effects of aronia berries on blood pressure. To find out more, visit abpstudy.com. That's abpstudy.com. Your future is here. The Global Academy, a forward-thinking state school for 14 to 19-year-olds interested in a media career. Visit globalacademy.com to find out more. Psst! Did you know that Pimlico plumbers have an utterly fabulous 24-hour service? For plumbing, heating, drains, roofing, electrics, appliances, carpentry and building? Whatever your predicament, Pimlico plumbers can send a friendly face to your door within the hour. Shh! And just between us. Their work even comes with a 12-month guarantee. They aren't just any old tradesmen, they're Pimlico plumbers. And they're always available on 0207 928 8888 or at pimlicoplumbers.com. Are you a business owner who's ready to retire? Or maybe an entrepreneur ready to sell and move on to your next exciting project? At Barnes Rofe, we actively work with successful entrepreneurs to help them through the sales process and maximize exit value. So, why not get some first-rate advice and speak to one of our experts? Your first meeting will be free, and you can make sure you really are getting the best deal. Contact us at barnesrofe.com. Barnes Rofe, clever accountants for business. When you buy the award-winning Alfa Romeo Giulia or the Stelvio Performance SUV, you can pretend it's for the five-year warranty, the three years free servicing, five years roadside assistance, or the five years 0% APR. But the real reason is, you just want an Alfa Romeo. Start something beautiful. Visit alfaromeo.co.uk. Five years or 75,000 miles warranty. Minimum 35% customer deposit. 60 months term. HP sales until 30th of June 2019. Decency supply. Alfa Romeo Financial Services. Ian Dale on LBC. 10 to 12. Right, let's go back to your calls to Nigel Farage. Don't forget you can watch us on uh, our website, Facebook, Twitter, and wherever else, YouTube. Evan is in Slough. Evan, what would you like to ask? Uh, hi, Nigel. Um, I'm just in interested to know if the UK economy is tanking, which is predicted by the vast majority of economists, oh, right. how, as a result of, of a, a no-deal Brexit, for example, how exactly would that lead to wages rising if people are losing their jobs? Uh, Evan, you know, the same people told me that we had to join the exchange rate mechanism and that if we left it, it would be a disaster. It was the best thing that happened to us in the 1990s. The same people, the exchange rate the same people told us... Though. That, well, it's not really. Well, well, actually, it's no. Actually, no. It's we not completely different. Something. We were not in something. We're yeah. currently in something. Something yeah. that's existing. You're talking about taking away something that exists, not joining something new. And the same people told, and you could make the same argument, but the same people told us if we didn't join the euro, catastrophe would overcome the city and manufacturing. I just told you that the, the, the euro was and the same people, that was gaining something. And the same people who are going got, to be losing something. And the same here. people. This is completely different. And the same people who've got everything wrong in the past are wrong about this. We, Evan... So all the economists are wrong, is what you're saying. Is this experts wrong? That's what you're Oh, absolutely. Saying. Oh, goodness me. I remember when 364... So you're telling us to ignore I remember experts. when 364 of them wrote to the Financial Times to say the so country was heading in the wrong you're direction. You're telling us to ignore UK experts. I am telling you to completely ignore those that are in the pay of the big corporate companies. Absolutely, I am. In the big pay. So you Absolutely, think all the majority of UK, I am. UK experts are in you corporate pay. Really? Very, Is that the cost very, of pay? You have to be very, very... incredibly divisive. You have to be very... 
Oh, divisive. You, oh, I know, Evan, what we'll do. Let's forget about the referendum. Let, let's, I tell you what, let's get rid of Parliament. Let's just get half a dozen big companies to run our lives. Evan, tell me, is Evan, your Evan, we are leaving. Divisive? Evan, we are leaving. Is your de- do we I have are a leaving. say on whether we leave or not? Do we, I have a say? As a Remain voter, do I say how we leave? Tell you've, me. Uh, do the Remain voters get a say on how we leave the country? Well, how would you do, do we get and a how, say? It's very tough to talk to you, really, isn't it? Uh, let's have one last little go here, because a lot of lot of people want to have a proper conversation. How would you like to express your view of how we leave, Evan? I think that we should look at the options available, and, for example, that will mean compromise. If, if, if this almost 50% of the country almost wanted to remain, then there's a good chance there's going to have to be compromise. So, so should we have a referendum on leaving on WTO terms? No, or? we should decide. You should deliver the, 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 the promises, the promise that you're not going to be held accountable to. You should... Those promises need to be delivered to people. I agree with you. We need to be a free, independent country, Evan. they should Evan. vote on that. Free, and if, if the deal, the government gets to get delivered to the deal. I mean, if we put you in government, you would have to run the economy, and I just wouldn't trust you running the economy. We so voted, Evan, Evan, the Evan the we voted to leave the to single market. We voted to leave the single market and the customs union. It couldn't have been clearer. You just don't accept democracy, Evan, do you? I, I am accepting democracy, but I have no, a voice in this too. And how do we leave? That's the question on the table. How do we leave? As quickly moment, as possible. At the moment, you have nothing. As quickly as possible. Well, that's, not, that's, not, that's not saying, hang, hang on, Evan. That, that's not just saying as quickly as possible. That's not saying how we leave. We want a clean break on WTO terms. Thereafter, we can have a grown-up and negotiation. And you know that all the economists are saying that will not happen. That is, that is simply not practical. You know that's not practical. You know the, that Ireland... Well, how do we trade with China on WTO terms? Away. How do we deal with America if on WTO terms? we make a deal terms? with the US, the US has made it clear that we can't just do over, do over Ireland and expect a deal from them. That's not Evan, I tell you what, I tell you what, you seem to be, you seem to be devoted, the, the, you seem to be devoted to the declining market in the world. You know, the GDP of the Eurozone in global terms is about 15 16%. It goes down 1% every year. There's a great big world out there. In economic terms, Brexit is our chance to refocus. In democratic terms, Evan, it's a liberation. You can't just dismiss every single economist, though, can you? Uh, Apart I, from the ones you agree with. No, 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 no. no. Well, th- well, that's the point, isn't it? Evan <laughs> chooses his ones, and I can choose my ones. But do you not feel but, that if you accuse him of living in his echo, echo chamber, people can also make the same accusation to you? Ian... I'm talking about democracy. I'm talking about liberty. I'm talking about I'm talking economics. About, well, I'm sorry, but I'm talking about something even more important than whether you or I think in the short term we might do better or worse, because the honest answer is none of us ever know. All right? Evan, thank you very much. Very spirited call. Wendy says, good morning, Ian. I hope you interview other guests as aggressively as you've interviewed Nigel Farage. Well, I think I think he can cope with it. I don't think I've been particularly aggressive. But, uh, <laughs> I think a lot of people... See, you, this is another one of these echo chambers. This you is one of today. these echo chamber things. People think I've been soft or I too know, hard know, or know, whatever. Know, anyway, Let's get Kenny is in Acton. Hello, Kenny. Good morning. I'd like to say uh, congratulations and thank you to Nigel for uh, starting the Brexit party. I'll be sending them a £25 across on Wednesday. So. Thank okay. you very what, much. What's your question, Kenny? Yes, I'd like to ask Nigel, what do you think of the possibility that after Brexit, Britain might not exist anymore? Because Nicola Sturgeon's using it as a, an impetus for a second Scottish referendum. Well, Northern Ireland might become part of a United <laughs> Ireland, and you know Wales might follow. So, well, Wales actually. Support. If that happened, well, Wales. If that happened, Wales actually, Kenny, is more Eurosceptic than most of England, um, and we saw right. that, and we saw that in the referendum, and we certainly <clears throat> see it in the polls today. Uh, as far as Scotland's concerned, well, it, it's remarkable, isn't it? But Nicola Sturgeon doesn't seem to accept the result of any referendums. Uh, she didn't accept the result of the uh, so-called independence referendum in Scotland or the EU referendum. Look, I think um, in the end, uh, Nicola Sturgeon's huge problem is that she wants Scotland to be hook, line and sinker, a member of the European Union, and that is why her desire for separation but the point from the is she wouldn't be having a second referendum if it wasn't for Brexit, would she? Which so inevitably back, which, which, the which, which, Union which is in, way, in more danger because of Brexit. Which in a way goes back to where we started. That's why we need to get on with this. If for every single reason, let's just okay. get on with this. Uh, Phil's in Ipswich. Hello, Phil. Well, hi there. Hi. Um, I just wanted to say, first of all, uh, I'm on the Remain side, uh-huh. and I just wish you had someone with the conviction that you've got on our side. I think you've done a brilliant job getting what you want you, to. You don't think Andrew Adonis fits the bill? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> What's no, your question, Phil? We don't really, Phil? Have, anyone, we don't really oh, have anyone... Oh, come on, Phil. You've got Change the, UK. The you've got Chucker and his chums. I mean, they must be your boys, yeah. surely. <laughs> uh, not really, no. It's just, they're just not quite... 
coming across as clearly as you do. Okay, what's your question? Which I think is very lucky for your side. Anyway, um, what I wanted to ask is if, um, given that, I think you'd, you'd agree that we all know more now than we did with the first referendum. Uh, Phil, I absolutely agree. The plans now for a European army, a United States of Europe, indeed an empire called Europe, could yeah. not, are much clearer now than they were so in 2016. So who's proposing an empire? Oh, this, the, the French Europe minister says we're building an empire. Um, uh, before that, Mr Barroso said we're building an empire, an expansionist empire. There's, there's, there's no pretending in Brussels about what this is. Well, to be honest, I'm, it, personally, I'd be quite happy for the United States of Europe. OK. But do you, do you understand? But you agree that we know much more than we did back then. Now, I just wanted to posit to you a, a, a sort of an idea. Mm -hmm. Me and my family were thinking about moving to Lanzarote. Uh -huh. And we're all dead set on it. There's six of us, and most of us wanted to do it. And once we'd made the decision, we then reviewed the schools and all sorts of ideas and realised that there's not much going on in the winter. And obviously, it's nothing like being on holiday. And basically... We'd, we'd already decided we were going to go, but having researched it and found out much, much more about what going really, really meant, mm -hmm. I said to the family, are you sure you want to do this? I can see why you're heading with this, and I don't want to cut you off, but we've only got 45 seconds to go. I think Phil is saying, well, look, we've had time to think. Should we not have another referendum? I'm, I'm assuming that's where he was going. Yeah, I get that. what... And I, I apologise, Phil, but we are running out yeah, of time. Look, as I say, uh, there's no pretending anymore. It's a United States of Europe. It's an expansionist Europe. It's not... It, and I think... Haven't we learnt something else since the referendum? The sheer, arrogant, bullying nature of Juncker, but, Barnier... But you were in favour of a second of referendum um, in January 2018. What I said is we have to get ourselves into the mindset that it may happen, and if it does, we have to embrace it, all right? The idea that you put your head in the sand and say it will never happen would be ridiculous. If we had another one, we'd win it by a bigger margin. The problem is, with this bunch of MPs, I'm not okay. sure they implement it. Nigel, we, we've got to change all of UK we politics. We have to leave it there. Thank you very is much indeed. That is it, I'm afraid. <laughs> That's Nigel Farage, the leader of the Brexit Party. We'll have another leading figure next Sunday day at 11 as well. I'll be back tomorrow from 7. We've got a local elections panel tomorrow night. James Broken, Chair of the Community Secretary's Labour Shadow, Andrew Gwynn and the Liberal Democrat spokesman Weira Hobhouse, so make sure you tune in for that. Coming up at 3, it's Ian Payne, but next on LBC, it's David Lammy. Churches targeted in Sri Lanka, leaving hundreds dead. One woman killed in a synagogue in the US overnight and previously attacks on moss in New Zealand. I want to know from you what you think is the driving force behind the hatred that's associated with these attacks. Call me. What's your views on hate in our society? Oh